let's discuss how much of a damage uh, uh, vices like COVID-19 and insecurity posed on the country's reputation on the global front. I have joining me live via Skype to discuss this. He is the managing director and chief strategist at Chain Reactions Nigeria. He doubles as the president of the Public Relations Consultant Association of Nigeria, PR Khan, Mr. Israel Jai Okpayemi. Thank you very much, Mr. Okpayemi, for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, and I first... good afternoon, viewers. All right, let me apologize for the mix up earlier today. Now, how can Nigeria involve our reputation in the era of COVID 19 and insecurity? Okay, I, I, will, I will answer that first question in, in, in this way. Uh, first, by viewing reputation as an asset, just the same way we view other tangible assets. Uh, two, by giving attention to measuring it because if you cannot measure it then you can't manage it so let me try and unpack this this concept of um, um, country reputation a, a, a little bit because it is measured um, according to the reputation institute a country has strong reputation if it has three things one if it has advanced economy, if it has an appealing environment, and if it has an effective government. So it is said that these three factors, these three factors evolve certain feelings, evolve a feeling of admiration, evolve trust, evolve esteem. So, but, but let's look at it a, 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 a little bit deeper. When you talk about perception of the environment, it, take, it takes into cognizance the fact that are the people welcoming? Is the country beautiful? Is the land beautiful? It talks about the lifestyle of the people. When we talk about government, it talks about the issue of public safety. It talks about ethics. It talks about international responsibility. Does that country take responsibility you know, in, you know, on the international scene? It talks about social and economic policies. And then, of course, uh, 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 you know, necessarily, the economy has to do with the fact that does that country have, you know, educated and reliable workforce? Does it contribute to the, the global culture? I mean, global culture is always evolving. Whether it is the pop culture, uh, whether it is a, a technological culture, you know, it is always evolving. So, uh these are the things, these are the indices considered. So before we even talk about whether Nigeria, you know, whether, whether Nigeria's reputation is exposed to a risk because of COVID-19 and because of the incident of insecurity that we are having, we need to first understand that concept, you know, very well. The, the concept of country reputation. This is why you will see that it's always evolving. There was a time that Canada was the number one on the country ra ranking scale but in the last few years it's been sweden so it's been sweden regardless of how, how we want to look at this i mean no country with the exception of maybe a, a very few countries like like switzerland can has been able to score across those three you know uh, uh, parameters so we have so it has to be measured it has to be before you can even manage it like an asset it has to be measured the reputation institute uh is a reputation measurement and management body in the uk that has been measuring the issue of that has been measuring the asset of country reputation since the year 2008 it might interest you to know and it might also interest our viewers to know that Nigeria has been featuring on that particular scale since the year 2011. But it is doubtful whether many Nigerians are even aware of this. It is doubtful whether even many of the government actors are even aware of this. That was why, as you could see, that increasingly from 2011, Nigeria has been adding one step or the other, one point or the other. It's gone from 2011 when Nigeria, when Nigeria scored 30% uh, uh, 
to 2013 when Nigeria scored 38 you know percent I think and I, and I think that that was um that, sorry 2013 rather that was the that was the time you know the the good luck Jonathan then got to know the administration got to know of the of the of the of of the assessment of the yearly you know assessment when when it dawned on government that Nigeria actually emerged as one of the top ten one of the top fifty you know companies on the on the national reputation rank ranking scale. So it is something government needs to focus on like an asset. It is something that needs to be managed. It is something that needs to be measured. So when we then we, we first have to un understand this before we can even talk about you know how you know how COVID nineteen has impacted it and how you know the the, the present level of insecurity uh, has impacted it. Uh, let me follow up this way. Uh, like we've also alluded to, there has been, bar, been a stream of negative news about and out of Nigeria, that insecurity. We've talked about that, abductions, ethnic strife, COVID-19, and uh, of course the NSAS protest, among others. Now, how can we now, since you've given us the insight into this, stem this tide? And what dangers do this risk pose on the ongoing developmental efforts? Okay, so to answer the first part of your question, the answer is simple. A plethora of good news. And that's why, I mean, I don't know whose idea it was, what the Disney newspaper, you know, has just launched today to begin to talk about, to begin to, to, begin to focus on the good news that are emerging from Nigeria. Now, if you know how that survey is done yearly by the Reputation Institute, they call the survey, you know, a, 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 a list of respondents from the G8 countries and ask them to look around the world and ask them, which countries do you admire around the world? Now, those people are not going to, those feelings are not going to emerge out of the blues. They will emerge by what they see, by what they read. And that's why it is important that we ourselves, our government must be deliberate and that, because that's one of the things about PR. PR is a deliberate and sustained effort. So we must be deliberate about it. We must sustain it. So to answer your first question that how can we do it, that is how to do it. A plethora of good news. Every nation of the world has what they can consider to be the unpleasant side of their society. When you look at, I mean, everything about United Kingdom today is not about Victoria Street or the Buckingham Palace. When you go to a place like Brixton, you will see people living by the roadside. You see people sleeping by the roadside. It has become the, the destination for even refugees who find their ways into the United Kingdom. But what do you see the British government doing consistently? They are deliberate about telling the positive stories, about telling the good stories consistently. So, so, so I'm, I'm so, I'm so excited about what this day newspaper. I don't know whose idea is this. It, it, it is. I don't know who has commissioned this this day newspaper to do it, or whether the editorial board of new, this day newspaper just felt, look, this is something we need to do for the love of country. But I think because it's it, there is a lesson for us to learn. How did Sweden emerge? as the country that is rated as the best in terms of country reputation. The Swedish government set up the Swedish Institute that was consistently communicating everything you needed to know about Sweden. They call it Sharing Sweden. They call that campaign Sharing you know, Sweden. So they were consistently you know, projecting very, very lofty stories very good stories, very noble stories, everything you needed to know, everything investors needed to know, everything visitors needed to know, whether you are a leisure investor, whether you are a leisure tourist or a business tourist, everything you needed to know about Sweden as a country, you will know through, through that. And, and I think that this may be the way for, Ni for Nigeria to go. I have, I have always said it, countries that have succeeded, you know, actually give this particular task to a separate body to run. 
and not to some Ministry of Information and not something that can also be demanded from the presidency. It has, it's a professional thing. And that's exactly what this, the, the Swedish government has done. That's what, when you look at, when we even come to a subnational and we take Dubai, for example, that's what Dubai has done. When we take, in, in the glorious days of South Africa, when you look at what South Africa did, that was exactly the same thing. We don't need, we don't need to pay the school fees twice. The models are there. When we look at those countries where these where, where this particular thing has been done successfully, we just need to take that example, localize it here. And that was what South Africa did. South Africa felt, hey, the story that was all about us years ago, the story that was all about, that was all over the place about us was that we are a land of HIV AIDS. And that was not what the country wanted to be known for. So what did South Africa do? South Africa set up Brand South Africa, an institution that, that, that was manned by professionals to tell the story of South Africa to the rest of the world. And of course, we then have South African tourism that was also then harvesting heavily you know, from that by saying, hey, when you come, these are the things you can do. In, in, in South Africa, if you are a tourist, whether you are a business tourist or whether you are a, you are a leisure tourist, most. but the asset of the reputation of South Africa was given to brand South Africa, and and and, and this is one thing that I, I we are still pleading. The professional community in Nigeria was still pleading that the federal government of Nigeria should take a look at. There is so much that is going on. I I, I, I stand to be corrected. I start to, there is so much going on in terms of infrastructure development today across the length and breadth of Nigeria. But what do you see? You see more of the negativity being reported than the, revol than the revolution that is taking place, whether, I, whether you want to look at the rail system, whether you want to look at you know, road infrastructure being done across the length and breadth of Nigeria. So it has to be deliberate. It has to be sustained. And that's what this whole initiative is all about. That Nigeria, yes, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are a nation at war, right? We are a nation at war. And we must recognize the fact that we are at war. One of the best days for me this year was the day Major General you know, Lucky Rabo was named as the, as the Chief of Defense Staff. Because he is a man who understands the psychological aspect of a warfare. He understands the psychological aspect of a warfare, that in a warfare, you must also communicate. When you are, when you are, when you are at war, you must always communicate. And so what did he do? He institutionalized, you know, the regular, you know, uh, a monthly briefing by the Nigerian military. He utilized milestone communication. He would say, hey, this place was under the control of of the insurgents as at so so and so so month, but we have taken it back. It will say, oh, this place is you know is so so and so, you know, um, um, in, in in terms of in terms of length and in terms of breadth, but we have taken it back. These are the people we have also arrested. It will show videos of the military operation showing how the Nigerian Air Force is pounding the location of the insurgents. Hmm. That's how to build, bring believability when you are fighting a war. Hmm. It is not to just make a claim and say, oh, we have defeated the insurgents. And, I, and if there's any person I, I would love to meet today, it would be Major General Lucky Rabo. Because he <laughs> understands what needs to be done. And I do hope and I, and I, and I believe there is a reason the president has appointed him to take this position at a time like this. And I know if, he, if he's given the free hand, he's going to do it, he's going to bring back that same method that has worked. Ask the journalists who were covering the theater of war. They will tell you that they were reporting from the place of conviction because they could see the evidence of the progress Nigeria was making. They were not just getting press releases in their newsroom. They were being shown the videos. They were being shown that, I mean, that is evidence-based communication. Now, allow me to butt in, Mr. Okwayemi. How to build reputation when you are facing insecurity. Okay. Now, well said. Uh, now, we don't have some of these negativities. Uh, whose remit is it to stop these streams of negativities? Uh, government or the private sector or both? Which do you think? 
I will even say it, it's all of us, really and truly. Government has a responsibility. The private sector has, has a responsibility. As a matter of fact, the, the, the Edelman Trust barometer that we have just unveiled recently has shown us clearly that business leaders have a role to play in helping to build, to build trust and credibility. Business leaders have a role to play. So it's, it's all of us. As a matter of fact, we, the citizens of Nigeria, if there's any campaign I would love to see at a time like this, it is a campaign around boosting support for our troops at the war front. We don't need the government to be able to do that. All of us just need to be able to utilize our various social media handles, our opportunities, you know, to speak, you know, at different our speaking opportunities, every opportunity we have. Just just that if every in every contestation, the person who the parties who are in that contest, they need something to boost their morale. And that's why in soccer, soccer is a contestation. You will see that the supporters club play a role. In enhancing the morale of the of the footballers, the same way, all of us have a role to play to support our troops at the, at, at a time like this. And, and, I, and I do believe that it is it is the responsibility of everyone. Government has to play its own role to communicate with the citizens as as often as possible, centralize. The messaging in such a way that we do not even we do not continue to have conflicting messages from serving government officials that raises doubt automatically once somebody says something and another government official says something else and this again you you, you can see what you can see how you can see that this is doable when you look at the example of what um the the ptf has done During the pandemic, the PTF kept on briefing the nation on a day-to-day -day basis, telling us the progress we are making, telling us the challenges we are having. That's how to breathe. That's how to build credibility. I, I'm, I'm sure if a reputation audit had been done, just focused on government and the management of the pandemic, we would have seen that probably the Nigerian government would have would have scored, you know, higher than ever before hmm. we then says we then tells us if there is anything that is working stick to it we have seen that talking to the nation talking to the people you know regularly and in a very concise in a very consistent manner helps to strengthen believability and by so doing strengthens reputation if it has worked, why do you want to change it? Why do you want to keep doing what has never worked? This has worked, and this is what we need. This is why we need to encourage the Nigerian government that we must continually, we must look at that model that the PTF has used to communicate with us thus far during this pandemic. Now, and replicate it. Okay, let me allow you land. And, and replicate it. To be able to communicate with with the people, whether on the issue of the uh, insurgency, okay. whether it's on the issue of and and build a consistent, you know, you know, mess message, build a consistent message that is factual, that is truthful. Everyone, I mean, for as long as I keep hearing things like banditry, there's nothing like, like there's nothing like 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 banditry. It is just Boko Haram. It, banditry is the revenue mobilization wing. Of Boko Haram. The bandits are their, are their revenue collectors. Simple as ABC. Hmm. So it is about insurgency. And government must take the example of what has worked with the management of COVID-19. And, and, and I think, I, uh, um, you know, uh, Mr. Boss Mustafa really, you know, uh, has, has, has done quite well. And if you look at Lagos also, as a, as a bright spot, but the, despite being the the, 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 the the epicenter of the pandemic, you could see that the fact that the governor of Lagos State 
and and the commissioner for 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 health professor abayomi kept on you know updating legotians about what was being done about the intensity of what was being done kept the people kept the people assured that we're not on our own that the government is with us and, and we know what the government is doing i mean that, that's the, the the whole idea of reputation really is what stakeholders think about you it is different from public image it is different from pr pr is pr is what you are saying that you are doing reputation is what the stakeholders think about what you are doing and and, and i think that these are two good examples what the lagos state government on under mr babajide somolu uh, 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 has done and what the ptf has also done and and this can be replicated and, and, and i say it with all all, all conviction this act can be replicated whether it is it is for the management of security communication in in the battle uh, against the, against the insurgents or any other aspect of our life all right now how do we tell the authentic nigerian story of hard work courage and diligence in the face of this negative perception locally and internationally it has to be it has to be it has to be it for it to be told it has there has to be a deliberate strategy around it that this is what we wanted to do and some countries have done it successfully and, and i recall uh, you know uh, when we had an opportunity of um, speaking to uh, the late you know uh, professor dora Aquile, this was one of the things you know we said to her we said no yes it is good that you want to you want to embark on a rebranding campaign ensure that this is strategically driven from the standpoint of the, the stories of nigerians let it not be about infrastructure let it not be about government because once it is about government uh someone will say okay because this this government is pdp Th those who are not of the pdp uh, are full will oppose it these other ones will say but once it is about the people we said to her let it be about the professor showing gas of, of this war Shimamanda achieved at Adichie. Let it be about what all of these people have done. Let, let it be about the what you know the, the, the accomplishments of the likes of Whiskey, David O, and what our what our people are doing in Nollywood, in entertainment, in sports. Let uh, let let that be let that be the let that be the forefront of, of the campaign. Let it not be about government because once it is about government, the opposition will kick against it and say, Oh. They want to steal our money, but unfortunately, I mean, uh, it, it, the, the entire thing went the way it, uh, you know, uh, it, you know, the, the, in, in, in the undesirable, you know, yeah. path. And so it 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 can be done. It is it is, but it has to be a deliberate policy. It has to be a, a matter of strategy that this is what we want to do. There are Nigerians across the world who have done phenomenally well. Who stories can be used to market Nigeria as, as a destination? That is not to say we will not confront the demons of insurgency or the demons of corruption, the demons of you know, uh, uh, you know, infrastructure challenges that we are still having. Hmm. Now, now, very interesting. But we need to, we need to move on. Time is not always on our side on television. In 2019, when you became president of Public Relations Consultant Association Nigeria, you offered the body's assistance uh, to the federal government in improving Nigeria's battered image on the international scene. Have you been taken up uh, on this offer? Not yet. We have actually done so twice. Now we offered. We also offered our professional services to the PTF when the when the pandemic hit. Uh, uh, um, you know Nigeria, but not yet. Nobody yeah. has reached out to us yet. Hmm. So now your company, Chain Reactions Nigeria, and its international partner Edmunds, recently released the result of the 2020 Edmunds Trust Barometer Survey. I don't know. I was I was at this event last year. Uh, I'm sure because of COVID, we weren't able to be there this year. That showed Nigerians trust NGOs and businesses the most. Now, how can we leverage on this to burnish the country's reputation further, Mr. Okbayemi? Well, I, I, I think the I think the first thing is to to even understand, you know, what what this means. And like I said, um, you know, during that 
you know, during that uh, presentation, and I think the the senior special assistant to uh, the president in the office of the vice president, um, Lao Lua Konde, was there. Said, look, every time research of this research of this nature, uh, you know, you know, comes to us, they are not meant to indict us, but they are meant to challenge us. Uh, having this figure that only 24% of Nigerians trust government. Only 44 trust the media. Only 60, only 62 trust business, and only 60 and 65, you know, trust non-governmental organization. Is is a call to action for government to say, what are those things, you know, that we need to improve upon? Uh, how can we how can we improve upon the or, or, upon this? So, um, we it becomes a useful asset with which we can punish. You know Nigeria's image when government even takes it to say, look, let's even look at this report. What are the areas we need to improve upon? I mean, just the same way we have challenged the media to say, look, even media, you also need to, you know, you also need because people are concerned about fake news. You also need to take a look at, you know, the work that you are doing. Forty-four percent is not good enough. How can you improve upon it? So it's about it's about the the, the willingness of government. Uh, what we have seen in other countries where the Edelman Trust. You know, barometer reports, uh, you know, you know, has I, 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 been utilized. Is that you know, we we see uh, the key actors, both the state actors and the non-state actors, inviting Edelman to say, we want to we want to know the facts behind these figures. Why why have we done? Why have we performed? You know, this way. You know, um, if it is twenty four percent, what what accounted for the twenty four percent? So that we can take the learning, we can improve upon this because it's a yearly thing. And then by the time we're doing it next year, who knows? I mean, we may have gone, we, the, the, we, we may have gone up by you know some twenty points, and we say, oh, I mean, it has moved to to uh, to, to fifty four. Uh, to 44 percent, or, or even or 54 percent, or 64 percent, based on the the work that uh, government has done to be able to improve on on the on the asset of uh, on its asset of uh, uh, um, you know reputation. All right, I think it's a good way to leave it. If you can do this in one minute, one minute. Uh, how do you want? How can we also make Nigerians see positive about the country? Can we do this in one minute? <laughs> well, I mean. Like I said, it's about all of us, you know, telling telling the good news. Because there is always something happening around us. There is always something. If you look around, if you want to see the negative, you will see the negative. But if you want to see something positive, if you want to see, you probably will see around, you know, close to your office there, maybe a, 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 a last bar offic official that, you know, who does, you know, his or a work conscientiously in the, even in the, in the, in the, in the scorching sun. It, that's a bit of that's a piece of good news, you know. Uh, or whether it's a, a particular infrastructure work that got, you know that, that has just been done, that's a piece of good news. When all of us, it's about accentuating the positive. Mm. If all of us begin to tell the good stories that we see around us, I am sure when the global country ranking, you know, is being done again in 2022, who knows? Nigeria will fe feature, you know, positively than it has ever done. I must thank you very much for your time. Managing Director, Chief Strategist, Chain Reactions Nigeria. is also the President, Public Relations Consultant Association of Nigeria, PRK, and Mr. Israel Jaye of Miami. Thank you for joining us on the show. I really appreciate this. Thank you for having me.